In early 2010, my pal Peter Emai in California got me onto green smoothies. Thank you, Peter. I've never looked back. Since then, I've been refining the technique uh, of my smoothie making uh, and the ingredients. And today, I'm going to show you how I make my smoothie. So, first, I'm going to show you the ingredients. Then, I'm going to show you the technique of how I do it. So, let's take a look at the ingredients. Here are the five ingredients I'll be using today in order of necessity, starting from the left. First we have the kale. This is actually lacinator kale, which I don't normally get. Uh, it's organic. And if you're in doubt, look for, the, uh, look for the holes where bugs have been eating. And even if you've got a few little bugs crawling around, I think I saw one in there somewhere. Um, but kale, I'll let you do any research on kale, but essentially it's from the wild cabbage family grows over winter and it's highly nutritious um, smaller the leaves sweeter it is um, look sometimes I sometimes you can get organic sometimes you can't um, apparently there is issues with pesticides again I'll leave that into you I'll just get eat whatever I can get my hands on pesticide or no pesticide second in necessity is your citrus lime is preferred however when lime is expensive lemon comes in a close second. This is the key to getting past any kind of tardiness or perceived yucky vegetable taste that you may have. It just takes the edge off, sweets it up and makes it somewhat more palatable, especially if the green vegetables are not very fresh. These two ingredients are all you need to get a rocking green smoothie happening. Next but not compulsory is the chia seed. I like to place it in my smoothie because it adds protein, um, some omega-3 fats and fiber. Some people like to add it in first, like myself, um, because it blends in and starts to make the mix a bit more cohesive. Friends like Davina likes to put it in last so it doesn't break down and you get these little balls of like, like omega-3 fatty stuff, gooey stuff around and she likes that. So personal preference but if you want the full cohesion where the greens don't flow to the top um, then put them in first. If you've got Udo's oil which I'm going to show you next then you can put them in last because the Udo's oil will do the same thing. I buy bulk chia. Uh, this is a Bolivian black chia seed on eBay. Pretty much the cheapest way to do it. Next is Udo's oil which my friend Zach got me onto. Uh, it's a vegan mix of omega-3, 6 and 9 and I like putting it in there because it provides me my daily oils and <clears throat> most of all it makes the mix uh, co more cohesive and also makes it easier for cleaning the, cleaning the blender jug. It just runs straight out and you're left with very little stickage at all. Um, and it's a huge time saver for cleaning. Uh, up, the upsides is, is this, or upsides and downside is that this stuff makes you very horny and it's quite expensive. And it also has a shelf life of eight weeks after being opened. This one's a funny one. It's a Brahmi Ginkgo 50-50 mix. Uh, my housemate Peter, uh, Peter's friend Dan got me onto this. Um, you take it for an extended period of time daily and apparently it improves memory function um, and memory retention concentration. I did it for, well I've taken this whole bottle over the last year which has been quite a big year. I really can't tell whether it made a difference or not but I sh sure got a hell of a lot done. So the thing with this is you have to keep taking it daily just so you build up a build up um, build it up in your system for it to be effective but I don't think there's any scientific evidence um, really up to you to make your own decision but you know I think it's a bit of a force multiplier on the smoothie. Storing your greens I recommend these nano bags um, they allow your greens to last like three times longer in the fridge they're incredible I use forever green bags um, but they're all out there there's plenty pick them up from your markets. The final ingredient that wasn't on the table is the ice now let me just cover ice Okay, I like these type of contraptions. So you can just turn the ice. Remember, I normally use 
one tray. This is two trays, but with little, little, little holes. Um, fill it up when you finish. Let your housemates know or anyone in the house to refill the ice tray because you don't want to be waking up to no ice. There is no smoothie without ice. We've been talking ingredients, but the final thing is a bit of hardware. So let's have a look at the blender that we're going to be using. This is a Sunbeam Multi Blender Pro. Uh, the key features of this that you want to be looking for in a blender is a minimum of 600 watts and also uh, ice, cutting, uh, ice cutting blades and you want a big jug, you know, this is a 1.5 litre, I wouldn't go any smaller than a 1.5 litre. And the target destination for the smoothie is a BPA free, hard and plastic, big mouth, so you can pour it in, one litre at least bottle, um, so you can walk out the door and carry it with you because it's a lot of fibre and you're not going to get through a whole lot of fibre in 10-15 minutes. It's something to chug along. Chug along. First, we add the ice. Put it in there. Next, we add the kale. Now the technique here is to take the kale, take the stalks and jam it so that you've got kale next to the ice, like that. Kale goes right down to the blender, down to the blending blades. What this does is it allows the blades to pull the kale down and the ice is actually a cutting agent and is used to cut the kale in conjunction with the blades. So you want to get a good blend, it's a little fire starter for your, for your kale and uh, critical to the process. Um, because otherwise you can end up going and you don't go anywhere. Next is some water. I fill it about a third of the way up. If you don't put enough water in, it won't actually blend your blend the ice and the kale. So it's critical to put probably a little bit more water in than not enough. Lemons, sometimes they get a little bit hard because you want to get maximized the juice. You don't want to go in there and use a juice ringer. That's one more thing you have to clean up. Professional chef told me to put them in a microwave, which I originally did, but then Mr. Molzig, Paul, Miggy, told me that all you do is uh, put them on a hard surface and give them a good rolling, like that. And then chop it in half, and you're ready to squeeze. In goes the lemon. Next we're going to take the Udo's oil, probably about 3 or 4 teaspoons, it's pretty heavy stuff. Add some chia. Oh! Add a couple of drops of this, the Brahmi Ginkgo extract. Drop our lid on. If all goes to plan, this should blend. Booyah! If it's not, if this one worked out perfectly, but if it's not, hit the surge, let it drop down into, into the base, into the bottom, give it another surge, like so. Boom. Until it takes, and you'll be like this. Boom, boom. Wait, ah, and you get it, wait, right. and then you're off. Just put it on. Like so. Here's one I prepared earlier. What I did was blend it for about three minutes, let it sit, if you have time, for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, so the kale breaks down. Then you give it another surge and then you're ready to go. And take your bottle, give your jug one more surge. Just so you get a final mix for an even pour. Give it one pour, 
If you got your measurements right, you should be able to pour everything in the jug into your bottle in one hit. Because of the Udo's oil, we have a seamless cleanup process. Adding fruit, anything with fruit just makes this sticky, makes it a bit gross. God forbid put milk in there. All you need to do, stick it back on. And there you have it. Mmm. Ah. Uh.